Welcome back to Practical AutoCAD and Inventor. If you've ever worked with dynamic blocks, then you know how useful they are for speeding up your workflow by creating adaptable objects. But did you know that you can chain multiple parameters together to make these blocks even smarter? Today I'll be chaining parameters in an AutoCAD dynamic block. In this video, we'll explore how to create more powerful and flexible blocks by linking parameters together. We'll cover step by step how to set up rotational and point parameters, link these parameters together so that changes in one will automatically adjust the others, and test and refine the block to make sure that everything works seamlessly. By the end of the video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to create dynamic blocks that can respond to multiple inputs, making your designs more efficient and adaptable. Let's get started. In order to show you how to chain parameters together in a dynamic block, I'm going to be creating a dynamic block of a protractor. The finished product is going to look like this. It'll be a protractor that when I come in here and I change the angle of the indicator, that it's going to automatically move the angle along with it, the number itself, and when I redraw, it will put the number in, indicating the angle that that line is. So what I've got so far here in this example drawing is I have a circle with a line and some other lines around it. But I want to now add the field that's going to be our indicated angle. To do so, I'm going to use the single line text command. You could use multi-line text, but I'm going to use single line text. My justification, J, I'm going to set up as the middle center. <clears throat> and I want the center point of that text like maybe a half of an inch over from the end there. I'm going to set my height up at a quarter of an inch. My rotation angle will be zero. And then I'm going to type control F so that I get the field manager up. I want the field to refer to an object. So the object is going to be this line right here. Of course, I want it to indicate the angle and I want to know the decimal degrees to a precision, precision of zero places. So when I choose OK, you'll see that it puts my field in there. Enter once for a cursor return. Enter twice to exit the command. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to make a block out of the geometry that I have on the screen. Accessing the block command, I will call it protractor. And then I'm going to pick my base point as the center of that circle and the objects are going to be all of these objects. So now <clears throat> it is a block and I'm ready to add my dynamic elements to it. Going to access the block through the block editor and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of parameters. Of course the first parameter that I'm going to add is going to be the rotation parameter. The rotation parameter is going to allow me to you know, set the angle that I want this line to be able to rotate. Before I put it in there, I'm going to add a description. It's always a good idea to add descriptions to your parameters so that when the user hovers over the grip associated with that parameter, they get an indication of what it's going to do for them. So I'm going to say set the angle of the protractor. And then my base point will be the center of the circle. And the end point, I'm going to make the end point of that line there. And then I'll click one more there so that I get my angle in place. The second one that I want to add is a point parameter. And I want the point parameter to be at the insertion point of that text right there. So I'm going to make sure that I get the insertion point insert of that text and then I'm just going to put it in there like that. This one doesn't need a uh, description and, and you'll see why in just a few minutes. <clears throat> now, the important thing here is that I want, when I change the angle of this line in a few minutes, I want the position of this number, this text, to go along with it. And to do that, you simply chain this parameter with this parameter. To do so, you will click both parameters and on the properties palette you'll see that down here at the bottom there's an option down here that says chain the actions and I'm going to say yes I want to chain those two actions together 
chaining them links them together so that when I change one, the other one will change also. Now that I've got those two chained together, I can come in and I can add my rotate action. So on the action tab, I'm going to choose rotate. Um, the first parameter is going to be the angle parameter, and then it asks me to select the objects that I want to rotate. The objects that I want to rotate are this line and the point parameter, not the number itself, but the point parameter, and press enter. So you'll see that my first badge goes away, telling me that they're not associated with each other. <clears throat> but the second badge is still here. Now if I were to test this at this point, you'll see what happens is if I come in here and I click on my angle, my angle moves, but my, or my, my line moves, but my text does not move with it. And that's because if I close the test block here, you'll see that there's still no action associated with that parameter. So what I want to do is I want to move, I want to add the move action, and when I move this parameter, the object that I want to go along with it is this text. Enter. Now notice that my second, my second badge has gone away. I now have a rotate action and a move action. So now when I test this block, <clears throat> come in here and pick it. When I test the block and I move it, you'll see that it moves with where I want it to go. If I do the redraw, it changes and updates the number. But there's something peculiar about this at this point. Notice that when I change my angle, okay, the number goes along with it, but there's a grip with this number, which will allow me to actually take this number and move it somewhere else. And maybe I want that, but maybe I don't. So what we need to do now is we need to go back and refine this just a little bit more. I'm gonna close my test block. And the way that we're going to refine this is notice that there's a grip that is associated with this point parameter. What I want to do is I want to eliminate that grip. So I will select the point parameter. And again, down here at the bottom on my properties palette, there's number of grips and I'm gonna change that from one to zero. So now without a grip, I won't be able to change the position of this number independent of the line. At this point, I'm done with everything I need, need to do. I've got my rotate parameter or rotation parameter. I've got my rotate action. Those two parameters are chained together and I've got my move parameter so that when this parameter moves, the text moves with it. I can close the block editor, save the changes, and now this block is ready to go. So a really easy way to add intelligence to your blocks by chaining parameters together. Hope this is helpful.